Hi, and welcome to Sprout Studio V3 The Tour. My name is Brian Caparici, and I am the CEO and founder here at Sprout Studio, and I am your tour guide for this video series. In this video series, we're talking a little bit about Sprout Studio V2, which is what you're familiar with and used to using, and showing off Sprout Studio V3, basically comparing and contrasting the two of them together so that you can get familiarized and acquainted really quickly. Now in this video, buckle up because this is probably going to be the biggest one. This one is all about priceless, which is really ultimately uh, where V3 started to be frank. Uh, that is sort of what took us the most amount of time. We went through four iterations of priceless before we landed on what you're gonna see today. And that's because Sprout Studio V3 all started with lab integration and lab integration required us to fundamentally change how priceless work within Sprout Studio. And so that's why we really had to roll up our sleeves and get under the hood and make that significantly better. So let's dive in to priceless in V3. I have V2 up right here and I'm loaded into the pricing and booking priceless section. And we talked in a previous video about the new settings navigation. So I'm not gonna run through that again, but let's just take a look at where we are here in V3. I'm in pricing into the section called pricelessness. So I've got my two priceless here and I've got my two priceless here. Now let's take a big breath before we hop into this because this is the biggest change. I'm gonna open up my priceless here and just take a really quick look at this structure here. And now let's open up the price list here. Obviously, huge difference. Let me kind of just minimize this to see. So again, similar to how V2 was. So in V2, you can see we have prints, products, services, digital files, and packages. Not all that different so far. Prints, products, services, digitals, packages. Obviously, it's a much different editor. We've built this into our full screen editor because there's a lot more that you can do with Priceless in V3. So in V2, here's what I wanna do, is I'm actually going to close this. I'm gonna make a new one just for a quick moment because that Priceless can be a little bit overwhelming and I wanna simplify this down as much as we can. In V2, there is only two constructs to make up a item for a print. And this is the biggest change. If you clicked new print size, you could say, great, you have a four by six, you could click print type, Create a new type, call it print if you'd like, and then you go create. And so now you have a price for a four by six print. Let's say that's $65 and then go save. Now from there, you could say, great, I also offer eight by tens. And I can click here, I can say, let's go print. And I do offer eight by 10 prints, they're $95. And let's maybe create a new one called framed print. And let's make that one $185. Okay, so there's like the simplest way that you can set things up in V2 in terms of pricing. You have a size and then you have a print type and each size with its print type has a price. And that's how pricing works in V2. Now let's take a look at how that works in V3. It's a little bit more complex, but also a lot more powerful, but we had to build it this way because with labs, as we integrate with labs and build up more labs in the future, they need more than just, hey, this is a size and then there's a type because labs have many options. They have an eight by 10 framed print, but you can have the cherry frame or the espresso frame or the gold frame and you can have matting or no matting and you could have glass or acrylic and you could have a glossy print or a satin print. And so all of them had an infinite number of permutations of iterations that this old way of doing it here in V2 just didn't work anymore. Which is why we built out the new structure here for you in V3. Now let's go into the simplest form here. I have a print here, four by six, five by seven, eight by 10. Again, not all that different. We have a print here, four by six, eight by 10. But within this, I now have two different print or paper types, glossy and matte. And then each of them have their own price. And so I can have that for all three of my sizes. And I also have an item here called gift packaging. Now that's not bad, that's pretty simple. We have a size, we have a type, and then we have a paper type, and then we have a price for each one of those. 
Let's close that and go into something a little bit more complex like the framed print. So I can open up the frame print here. Well, now I have three options. I have the frame type, I have the paper type, and I have the matte thickness. Now each one of those creates its own permutation. I have an espresso frame eight by 10 with a satin paper with a thin mat, but then I have an espresso eight by 10 frame with a satin paper with the thick mat. And then I have an espresso frame with a glossy paper with a thin mat, but then an espresso frame with a glossy paper with a thick mat. And so you can see that every option that you add, frame type, paper type, mat thickness, it creates more permutations. But again, that's great because it gives you that flexibility to set this up exactly how you want and make sure that you're structuring your prices in a way that's profitable in a, in a way that makes sense. So let's kind of just collapse that for a moment um, and dive a little bit into how you actually build these. So if I go into framed prints here, uh, actually, no, I'm gonna make a new one instead. I'm gonna click add new, I'm gonna go self-fulfilled print. So we're gonna call this my framed print. So again, looking over here, the difference here is that instead of creating uh, a size first, you create a type first. So that's the difference there. And then within here, you have your sizes in here. So this is your four by six, for example, versus over here, you got four by six up top. And then now available options. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, you didn't have that in V2, so there's nothing to compare. Item add-ons also didn't have that in V2, so there's nothing to compare. So we'll kind of leave that alone. And then settings, you have tax or booking auto credit there. Whereas in here, it was all set up, oop, not in there actually, it's in this one for the size. So you have it right there, there's auto credit. So that and then tax previously was per item here. So you have a four by six print that's taxed. We've now simplified that and brought that up to the print type itself. Everything within it now will either be not taxed or taxed. And same thing with booking auto credit. It will have an auto credit or it will not have an auto credit, which basically just means that if this is a part of a booking proposal or a booking page, if a client purchases this item, should it create a credit for them in their gallery? That's all that means. Uh, otherwise, this styling and design doesn't exist in the old one, so nothing to compare there. And let's kind of take that, and now of course you can click reorder to reorder these if you'd like to. Um, let's close down prints, open up products. So products now, again, they look very similar to prints. If I go into products, here's all my individual products. Let's take a quick look at how that looks. I'm gonna close this out and go into the same price list here in V2. So let's take a look here. So there's products here in V2. There we are, just took a moment. So there's the products there. Here's the products here. To edit these, you just click the edit button here and it opens up your description, your price, your taxable, and your add-ons, as well as your fulfillment information. If I go over here, if I click edit here, it's all now on the sidebar. So you've got your tax, your auto credit, photos required, and then all of your description and photos are set up here in styling, and we'll talk about that later on. And of course, to add add-ons, you just click add-ons here, cover upgrade, and for all of these, you can set a price, and you can set a uh, cost. So whatever you want to charge your client and whatever it costs you. And then of course, also for here, you just click your cost and click your price and you can set those up there. And there's also the button here to also open up over here and then you can click this little drop down here to click duplicate if you want to clone this. Or if you mistakenly made this as a product and you want to turn it into a service, you can now do that here, whereas you couldn't do that before in V3. Of course, editing the name is always in the top over here. So that's products. Oh, and then also you click reorder to drag and drop these to reorder those. Now I'm going to close that, go into services. Services is the exact same thing uh, as products, so I don't necessarily need to go into a full demo of that, but services live here, whereas services now live over here. If I go into digitals, there's digitals in V3. If I go into digitals here, there's just one little card here. So you have to open this up to actually view this information, single image, is it enabled, yes or no, what's the price, entire gallery, enabled, yes or no, what's the price. If I go over here, now you can see single image, hide or show, entire gallery, hide or show, you got your price, and then if you actually click that, you've got the rest of the options there, whereas you have them down over here. Now the only other part um, is that if you see the fulfillment section here, whether you're enabling 
digital fulfillment or not. That's not here editing the digital files, but instead if I go back into the main price list section here, so if I close everything out here, I've got main settings, here's the details for lab fulfillment, here's the details for digital fulfillment. So that all lives over here. So we kind of keep the fulfillment information collapsed and together over here. So that is digitals. And then lastly, packages. Here's my packages here in V3. And if I go back into V2, here's my packages right here. The package builder is very similar in V3 as it is in V2. So if I click into edit there, and if I click into edit here, Now I'm actually working with, oh, there we go. So it did work. I was going to say I'm working with uh, data that's been migrated. So it may not work in the old version, but it did. So here is the package builder here. Here's the package builder here. Again, very similar. Click add item to add items. You have description and image. We'll talk about that later on because that's all a part of Visualizer. You have a lot more flexibility with how you can show off your packages and your products and your services and your prints in V3. That's a big improvement that we've made for you. Uh, but otherwise, everything is right here. And now you have the ability to say, hey, what's this package used for? Is it universally used? Do you want it only available for bookings, meaning it won't show up in your galleries? Or do you want it available only for galleries? So the nice thing about that is if you have your wedding packages, for example, you know, package one, package two, package three, or your session packages, if you don't want to show those in your shop for a gallery, then just choose bookings and that way it'll never show up in the gallery. So it's a nice little way to set that up so that you can classify where things show. And that is the package builder. Otherwise, if I close out here and go into main settings, this is where you can turn on or off the public pricing guide. We'll talk about that later on and set up all the details for that. This is where you set up lab fulfillment. We'll talk about that later. Digital fulfillment I already talked about and this is how you configure your shop, which we'll also talk about later on. Whereas over in V2, if I go over here, close this, and then that is where you have all of your public price list information here. So that all moved over here in V3 into this main section up here. And so that's a quick comparison between priceless in V2 and priceless in V3. Let's walk through setting up your prices here in V3. So let's kind of take a look at everything that's in there and walk through making a new item from start to finish so that you can see how it all works. Let's kind of forget about V2 for just a moment. So I have the price list still pulled up here. Let's go ahead and click the add new and then go self-fulfilled print. Now these are prints that you're going to fulfill yourself as opposed to pulling in prints from one of the labs that we integrate with. So let's just start here by calling this my framed print. And let's just kind of walk through some of these things here. So we have tax, yes or no. We're gonna go ahead and turn tax on. Booking auto credit, that basically means that if a client purchases this item in a booking page or in a booking proposal, then you can have it automatically create a credit or not automatically create a credit for fulfillment in a gallery. I'm going to leave that off for now. Let's go to the next section here for print sizes. So this is now where I can start to add the sizes that I offer for this particular type of print. So I'm going to go ahead and do 8 by 10 and do 10 by 10. I'm going to do 16 by 24, and I'm going to do 20 by 20. Let's just kind of leave it at that. Those are the sizes that I want. Let's say that I come back into this, and I'm like, oh, you know what? Actually, I want to offer a 5 by 10, but I don't want this down here. I want this up top. I can click the reorder button here and just drag that on up and then go set order, and that way it now stays at the top, and it's organized that way alphabetically. Now, if I mistakenly made something, I can click that, and I can click remove. And that way it shows up just like that. Let's open that pack up there. There we go. So um, that is how we have the sizes there and the sizes are all over here. Now, the way that we sit right now, this is actually really simple. I have my framed print and I have four sizes here. I've got a cost and I have a price. Now for these, I can click into those. I can type a number, figure out the cost from my lab or whoever I'm processing this, go tab and then type in a number, tab, tab. So you can kind of tab through these really easily. So we made working with price lists really easy, almost like a spreadsheet so that it's simple for you to run through and work with these items. And you can also use pricing assistant, which we'll show later on, where you basically just set your cost and then use pricing assistant to automatically set your uh, prices there. So that's kind of a really nice functionality that we built for you.
So moving back over here, we have print sizes. Now, one of the things I want to show you is that let's say that initially you hop on in here and you set these prices. So you know that your cost for an 8x10 framed print, let's say, is going to be $65. Um, let's go cost for a 10x10. I'm just arbitrarily picking numbers here for this. Cost for a 16 by 24 is let's say 100, ooh, 125. And then a cost for a 20 by 20 is let's say 175. Now let's actually go into Pricing Assistant just really quickly and take a look at this. So I can uh, select all or deselect all or only apply Pricing Assistant to certain ones of them. That way you can basically figure out exactly what you wanna be charging your pricing for. I can click this configure button, set up my hourly rate, set up my markup, set up how much time it takes me per print, go back and then I can click calculate pricing and it automatically jumps in and puts in my pricing for these items for me based on my cost. So I'm really excited about the pricing assistant for you in V3, but I'm not gonna dive too much into that. I just wanted to get some prices set here. Now that I've got those set, 199, 229, 369, 519, let's actually go back into here. Let's take a look at this. This is kind of a fun one. I go into here and let's just go nearest 10. Instead of doing like the dot 99 strategy, let's just go nearest 10. I'm gonna click calculate, keeps my prices nice and simple. 200, 230, 370, 520. Now let's leave it at that. I'm actually gonna go save just to kind of give us a quick save here. I can go save or save and close as I'm working with this stuff here. Now I'm gonna go in and start making some options. Now options are uh, variations of those prints. So let's say for example, you have an eight by 10 framed print, but you have an espresso frame or a gold frame. So I'm gonna set that up now. Now you have basically an option, which is the name of the parent. So this is like frame type. And then you have choices within that option. So I can click add choice and I can call this espresso frame and I can call this gold frame. So I now have two different frame types, espresso and gold. And if I open up now this, you can see the prices are no longer on just the eight by 10 because now we've created these permutations for it. So we have frame type, espresso frame and gold frame. Now by default, they're not included because you can include or exclude these if you'd like. If you don't offer certain options, you can. But if I click plus, you notice that it copied the price down from the original eight by 10 there. So if I go like that and I go plus, 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 and then go like that. So it's kind of copied those down here. Um, and that is how you set up your frame. Now, of course, you can add more options. Let's say that you want to have uh, matting and you want to say uh, thick mat, or you want to go no matting. So you can go like that. Now you can also reorder these. If I click edit, reorder options, then you can drag those around and reorder them. And so now though, as you go into here, you can see that you've got even more options set up here. So if you go into here, you can include them, you can exclude them by going like that. Now let's say that maybe for example, 20 by 20, you don't want to offer a no matting option. Uh, so we can kind of click the X here to exclude those. So now there's no, no longer going to be a 20 by 20 nomading option for either of those. If I go into 16 by 24, let's leave all those. Let's leave all those. Maybe you want to have no option for um, nomading also for the smaller prints. So you can kind of set that up and customize all that um, as you see fit here. And so that's how you set up those uh, options there. Of course, you can reorder these as well here, and then you can add as many options as you'd like. And that is what the available options are in there. And uh, I mean, otherwise setting up products and services and digitals and packages are all really similar to how you do it in V3 or in V2, sorry. So I'm not gonna even necessarily dive into those. Uh, however, one of the things that I do wanna outline is that we built this suggested print functionality where we've actually done the work that I just showed you for framed print here. We've done that work for you setting up sizes, setting up options, just for like best practices, at least as like a starter, as a way to get you going. So if you click that, you can actually choose to copy any of these in. Let's click Canvas Gallery Wrap, and we've already kind of set you up with some defaults for that, so you can kind of get going with that in the right direction. So if you wanna do it all manually and set that up yourself, you certainly can, but if you wanna start with our templates, you certainly can as well. And so that's how Priceless work in Sprout Studio B3.